Thanksgiving begins a very special time of the year for us. It's the time of peace and reflection and of getting ready for the new year. One thing we should all be thankful for is that we live in America, where we have the freedom to change things and the opportunity to... Welcome to the Drum Turkey Show. Starring Big Blue. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Drum Turkey Show. Hi, Kim. Hi, hi. Oh, I love you. You are just like a giant... We're Lady, Lady Liberty just squirted in my face. Okay, when you do drink with a straw, the myth is you get more drunk because you get more air mixed in. Hi, Maggie. Like, you know how the, the, the fans going like this? It goes, ooh, yeah. when it hits my butthole. Ooh. Last time I went to Mexico, the, I, I, I stopped by a little stand and the lady had gloves. I was like, uh uh-uh, uh, lady, take off those gloves. I need that shit. Yeah. It wasn't. What the like, freaking beer so you can feel good and like, like it tastes good. What the hell's the point of this? <laughs> And Daniel J. I got a friend named John Martinez who's not allowed in library. Yo puede hablar español cuando yo tomando. You look very handsome tonight, LJ. Every day, it's every day thing. I got to wake up. This is excellent. Y'all watch them every Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. I get to see them every day. They <laughs> get, get to see those chicks every day. What's on his face? And the other one. It still sucks. This is Phil J. Pride, and you're listening to the Drunken Turkey Show. You're one stop for this sort of thing. Hit that button, like, and subscribe. You know what to do, just like every other podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Drunk Turkey Show on a Wednesday night edition. Um, I'm with my good buddies, Big Blue and Jaime. Jaime, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. I missed Monday, so here I am. Here yeah. I am. Wait, 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 wait. You got to tell everybody why you missed Monday. Oh, I was, uh, oh, man. <laughs> Sorry, Ray, I was about to disappear. <laughs> Don't worry, feds. I was just at the Taylor Swift concert in Houston. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Did you get any autographs? No, no. I mean, we we're pretty close, but not. I didn't get no autographs. I don't know. I don't think anybody's gonna get close that that close. I would have thought you would have got her to sign your chest. <laughs> I wanted I wanted to feel some of her sweat on me. <laughs> <laughs> Big blue, speaking of sweat, Big Blue, how you doing tonight? <laughs> I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Enjoying a nice cool. tea. Nice tea. Like, nice, man. Nice. Always, always have to work. So. Always coming in with a blue shirt. Always coming in clutch. Never fails us. Never yeah, fails us. And, and guys, you might be seeing uh, those in the live chat, especially those that are members. I see a lot of members in there. George, uh, Steelers fan, Holly B, uh, Deplorable Golden. Uh, if I missed you, I'm sorry. I've just seen the ones that we just saw. Who knows? MF and Nikki. Uh, you guys have some new emojis that are out there. Um, check them out. Check them out. You, you'll, you know, let us know which one is your favorite by posting it in the live chat. And so uh, give me one second. I'm going to take a sip of this. Uh, Big Blue, why don't you tell us something interesting while I do that? Okay. So, <laughs> I figured out how to change the name. So I, went, I, I forgot her name. I'm so sorry. So I put her as guest. I put her name on there when we bring it up. Okay. Okay. So we do have a guest. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with the Amy Malovic case on Monday, we did a video talking about the possible suspects in the... Uh, Amy Malovic case. It's a cold case that occurred back in 1989 when this little girl was abducted by uh, at Bay Square Mall Village in Bay Village, Ohio. Mm-hmm. Um, she Her body was found a few months later. Uh, there's been no arrest in the case. There's been a couple of people of interest, uh, one here recently, more so than the others. And today we have a, a guest, a special guest. Her name is Christy. She was a best friend with Amy back in the day. And Welcome on to the show, Christy. How are you doing? Hi. Can you hear us? Yeah. I can awesome. Hear you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of the show. And, and thank you for, f- for uh, contacting me. We've been talking about this case for a while. Uh, you put me in touch with a couple of people, one of those people being James Renner, uh, who is the author who uh, has done a lot of boots on the ground type of work in this case. Um, He's really excited about this. Actually, can you guys hear me? Yes, 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 we can. All right, awesome. He's really excited about this, actually. He's really excited to watch. 
Awesome. Well, you know, we're excited yeah. to hopefully have him on the show in the near future. I know he's he working will. on a book uh, right now. I think he's in Los Angeles or somewhere like that. Out of yeah, Hollywood. Yeah. And so uh, he's busy with true crime. He's an awesome true crime author. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And so um, we hope to have him on the show uh, soon. And I see a lot of those emojis coming through. I see the big blue, hi, man, big blue turkey time. Hey, where's me? Oh, there's me. <laughs> Just wanted to check it out. Check it out. So, yeah, everything sounds good. We appreciate that. And as George says, welcome. So. Hi. So you're from uh, Bay Village. Is that correct? Yes, I am. And you knew Amy Malovic. When did you first meet her? Amy and I met in second grade and um, we were like instantly best friends. And she, uh, um, I got a call or my mom actually got a call from her mom to have a sleepover in second grade. And it was like unheard of to have sleepovers. And then um, they, she has to have a sleepover with me. And I was like, what? Like, I didn't, like, it was, like, unheard. Like, I was really young in second grade. So, yeah, I went over and slept over at her house, and uh, we were best friends ever since then. Awesome. So, from, like, awesome. second to fourth grade, we were, like, really inseparable. Nice, nice. And so, uh, tell us a little bit about Amy. What kind of person was she? Uh, can you hear us? Yeah, I can. I'm I'm on my phone, which sucks, but whatever. Um, she was an amazing human. She was spunky. She was a follower or a leader. She was a total leader, not a follower. I'm sorry. She was a leader. She would like, I'll, I'll never forget. Like there was this one time on the playground that she like pretended to like play horses. She had the whole entire playground, like following her around like horses, like <laughs> leaping around. Like, she, cause she loved horses. She was, um, she was um, actually uh, rode horses all the time. And I, don't even understand how she could do that because horses are kind of scary and they're like huge animals. But she would like pretend to be a horse and we would follow her around on the playground. And she was an artist. She was, a, she, she was so smart. She was like beyond her time. She was, a, oh. she was a, such a wonderful human. Right. Right. And um, so she was fond of animals. Is that correct? Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, there's been some uh, implications of certain people of interest, and one being that perhaps they got her phone number from the Nature Center. Did you did you ever attend that Nature Center? Uh, are you familiar with the Nature Center that's in question? Yeah, I did. Um, what did it require you to put your name and address there? Or was that just something that you know some people did? Yeah, they did. Well, they didn't require, like, when we, when you would walk in, it was like, as you were like a little kid, you would like just scribble your name and address down on. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And so um, when it came to her, how often, how often do you know that she went out there? Or was that something that was only school related? Or was that something that maybe perhaps you guys went after school as well? Yeah, you can go anytime. Like awesome. we, we went there, I think we've, we went there probably like, times when like i mean as an adult i could bring my children there like anybody can bring their children there so look at mm -hmm. the animals like it's still there um but obviously we don't like sign in now but back then there was like a login book that you would like sign into yeah. um but yeah you could go in any time any time gotcha. and anybody could probably get that login book and see whose name was on there. Well, y'all were there. You, you never noticed anybody following you guys or anything like that. You no. in particular, maybe. No, nothing I, like that. No, like honestly, like I wish I knew more about like. I just know about Amy. You know, I just know about right. her and what a wonderful human she was and how we were friends. Like. There, there was nobody ever suspicious when we were kids. We were young, we were naive. Like I never would have ever thought in a million years that anything would happen to anybody that I loved. Right. That was like the last thing ever on my radar as a 10 year old. I never would have thought anything. I mean, Bay Village is a very small, cozy 
town. It's white people. Like there's no like there's no crime. I mean, honestly, like there's nothing bad happens in Bay. So as a kid, you feel very safe. So I never. It, it would have never been on my radar for anything bad to happen. So if I was at the nature center and like, if there was a guy walking behind us, I never would have thought anything suspicious. Understood. Understood. Um, tell me a little bit about the sleepovers that you guys had. How many, how many sleepovers would you say that y'all had? And was it primarily at her house or was it at your house? It was both. We had a ton. I don't even know. I can't even name the number. <laughs> But it was at both people, but both houses. Yeah, we, we, uh, yeah, we would sleep when we slept at her at her house. We would sleep in her parents' bedroom, and we would watch Golden Girls and um, <laughs> cuddle up. And then we would go in her room. She had this huge, big, beautiful dollhouse in her bedroom. Did I remember that we used to like play with like big, gorgeous dollhouse? And at my house, like, we would just cuddle up on a chair. Like, we would always be cuddling up together. Like, we would always be, like, snuggled up. And mm -hmm. we'd watch Dirty Dancing and uh, uh, the monkeys. We loved watching the monkeys after school. Uh, we were just, like, little kids. Gotcha. Typical little kids. N now, when you would stay at her place and you say you slept over and you, um, were her parents there during those times? Yeah, I would say most of the time. I mean, honestly, like, I'm not one to know, like, yes, I would say yes. I mean, honestly, like, I don't, wouldn't notice anything out of the ordinary. I, it, it wasn't about her parents. It was about her and I. Right. No, well, what I'm trying to say is, was there ever a moment that, you know, her parents would go out while you were there or anything, go out in the town? Nothing nefarious, just, you know, not that um, I know leave of. you guys behind. Oh, okay. Okay. Not that I remember. Um, was there ever a time that maybe perhaps she spent the night and something, you know, anything was odd, maybe um, I don't know, time that she was dropped off? Yeah, there there was one time that she like she we had a, I had a sleepover with like one of my friends and she um, yeah, she was dropped off or picked up. Um, at one of my friends houses, like at a weird hour of the night. And it was very, very odd. Like she, it was like midnight and we were like 10. Right. I think it was like around midnight and her, she had to get picked up at a weird hour of the night, which was very odd. Gotcha. Um, but that was like the only um, thing I can remember. Other than that, like we would just have like normal sleep, like normal, like little kid sleepovers. Understood. Understood. Well, you have a question, Ivan? Yeah, I was gonna ask her. Um, do, do, did you consider Amy to be too trusting? Yes. Yeah. I mean, at that age, I mean, I, I mean, I was too. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, yep. we're like at that age, we're really naive at that time. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and, and Bay Village was also described as a place that had very low crime. So, I, you know, it, it seems like, you know, her mom would leave, you know, allow her to stay at home alone for about an hour until her brother got home um, after school, correct? Yes. I mean, which is fine. I mean, honestly, like I have, I have children and um, I would trust my 10 year old to be home alone. Right. You know, like, right. honestly, like I would be okay, like, she was that kind of human. She'd be okay to be alone. She was very responsible. She was did a you wonderful, ever, smart human. Did you ever, you know, go to her house after school? Yeah. Uh, did the phone ever ring during that time? I'm sure the phone rang, Daniel. <laughs> did she? But I don't did she know answer the phone? Any phone calls? No, no, I'm not, not referencing that. But would she? Was it? common for her to answer the phone while she was home yeah oh, or, of course yeah yeah okay so she did answer the phone it wasn't mm -hmm. like she chose not to or waited to somebody else no she yeah she yeah okay um i had a quick question <laughs> go ahead blue uh, back then when she went missing um how did the school handle it what they what they tell you i'm sorry what'd you say honey i'm sorry uh, oh back when when she went missing how, how did the school handle it what they tell you <clears throat> well, the school didn't have to tell us anything because it was all over the news. Okay. Um, it was, um, I'm pretty sure it was like a Friday night because it was, 
it because we were all at a sleepover like there was like a bunch of us at a sleepover and my mom came running down the stairs freaking out like has anyone seen amy like my mom was in panic full-blown panic mode and has anyone seen amy and we were all like why and she was like she didn't come home her mom doesn't know where she is um and then from then it went to the news and it went you know all over so i mean the school obviously handled it but we are we i mean before this i mean the school was good i mean school is there for us because nowadays they have like grief counselors and they have all this stuff right away when something happens right but i I just wondered like back then what they would do is they just say hey she's missing anybody know where she's she's at or they they make flyers or anything yeah i mean Bayville, you have to understand, Bay Village is so small. And it's such a small little, like, it's so teeny. It's such a tough, it's, um, I don't think they would have ever, obvi- well, they would, nobody would ever expect this to happen. But right. um, yeah. Bay Village was not prepared for this to happen, in my opinion. And I think something happened and i don't want to like say anything bad about the police but uh something happened and i feel like they weren't ready for some kind this kind of case they weren't ready for for this kind of murder so so when you know just to kind of to kind of go back so she would answer the phones when she was there alone um how how long was for how long do you know that this was happening? Because I can I, I can assume that when she was like in you know younger eight seven years old that that probably wasn't the case, right? She wouldn't be left alone during that time. She might have. She might have. Okay. Um, but she she had an older brother. Right, right. How much older was he? Oh my god! I hate myself for not knowing that answer. Three four, three years maybe. I believe it was three years old enough. Right. Old enough to be with her, and and welcome uh, a new member. Uh, who knows, MF and Nikki? Thank you for joining. We appreciate that. Um, yeah, I think um, I think at that time I, I remember hearing that there was only like four or five crimes at the time of that year, and there were like burglary crimes, like so it's like the town's so small, that it, and when something like this happens, it's like. It's it's unheard of, you know, especially in in a small town compared to a big city, you know. Right. So small. I'm serious. So, like Bay Village is like a small. It, it still is a small white town. Like it's white people. I mean, it's like small, white little tucked away town of. That's it. Is it a right. suburb of Cleveland? I looked it up in the map. Yeah, it's, it's pretty close. It's by Cleveland, but it's very it's by Cleveland. Yeah, it's a west it's a west side suburb of Cleveland. But I mean, it's white. They're all white. I right. mean, it, whatever. Call me racist, whatever. But I mean, everyone's white. <laughs> but I mean, it's okay. It's always always been like that. So I mean, right. it's like there's never been crime. Like they, it like I, I kind of get angry about like the fact that sometimes they like forget about Amy, and I'll be like, like I had to like leave like. The, there's community pages on Facebook and where people will be like, Oh, this is such a safe town. And I'm like, how fast do we forget about Amy? You know, like, I mean, it's safe. It is safe, but I mean, uh, no, people say San Antonio is safe and we have, yeah, there's over a thousand over, I think it was like over 20,000 murders last year in San Antonio. So it's pretty safe. What was it? Like 20,000. Pretty safe. So it's very safe. It's a good when, town. Right. So what do you remember from the day of the disappearance? Like was uh did you talk to Amy that day? No, I did not. Um it's weird because uh I actually um it's weird because I thought I saw her walking by my classroom i thought that was my last memory but on the dateline that i did i had to read um my statement that i wrote to the police and 
I said that I saw her getting on the, the bus to go on a field trip. So the last time I actually saw her was going on the bus on a field trip. Mm-hmm. So that's the last time I saw her was um, going on a bus on a field trip. And the, when you, how, how much, what was the time difference between that time and the time that she went, dis- she disappeared? It was that day. Oh, okay. So it was that day. Uh, there was some, there was some, you know, she apparently had told some people that she had received a phone call. You, you had no knowledge of that phone call that she may have received. Uh, maybe did any of her friends ever tell you that she had told them that she received that phone call? No. No. So after the disappearance, um, it is to my understanding that um, her mother started to call, you know, people around asking, you know, if they had seen her or anything like that. Uh, do you know if anybody came forward with some kind of information from uh, uh, from that? I wish. No. 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 Okay. I wish someone came forward. Right. And so after the fact, you know, days after the disappearance and, you know, leading up to the years after the disappearance, what was the talk of the town like as far as who did they think, uh, you know, anybody was responsible for this or anything like that? Uh, was there any rumors that were going on? Uh, um, days after, no, no, there, no. And so she days just after, kinda, it was like we were scared. Like Bay Village kind of shut down. Right. We went on lockdown, kind of a little bit. Understood. Understood. Um, so we done a video not too long ago referencing a couple of suspects, and the first one that's come out and this has been a guy that has been a long time person of interest in fact you know uh, james renner has written about him and, and talked about him and that's dean runkle uh, first and foremost and, I, and i'm sure you've talked to james and whatnot what are your opinions of dean runkle um my opinions of, of dean runkle is like he sounded like a good suspect but i don't think it's him you don't think it's him. What are what are some of the things that make you think it's not him? Because I kind of sleuthed a little bit, and um, I feel like he he might have been inappropriate at some times, but I feel like his inappropriateness was not. I don't think he could be a killer. If you were to see him, mm-hmm. he's a really teeny tiny guy. Mm-hmm. And I think he's gay. I think he's like a teeny tiny little gay guy. Gotcha. And I mean, I don't mean that. No offense to like the gay community. Like, I don't mean like any offense. Right. But I mean, he's like a smaller man. And um, I think sometimes in cases like this, people like might throw, like take things out of perspective. Um, I I don't know. For, through my sleuthing, no. But gotcha. I he... Ugh. There's a lot of things that do point to him, which I understand. Right. But everybody's going to sleuth right now because there's nothing out there. Yeah. Right. We have nothing from this case. Like, where's all the information? So like, we need something. Right. He he Give wasn't from the area, right? Yeah, uh, we have Uncle, nothing. He was from Vermilion, I believe, at the time, and from New New London. Is that correct? I believe Who, that's where he was from. Uh, Runkle. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, yeah. yeah. But I mean, like, he, he didn't have any ties, or you never heard of anybody seeing him in town. No, I mean, he well, he was a teacher in Vermilion, and apparently he had ties to Amherst, or, or uh, what is it, where where her where her body was found, maybe. But right. honestly, like, I mean, he is a I I can see because he signed um the Nature Center book, but I mean, no. To me, he's a no. To me, he's a no. I get why people think it could be him. And honestly, sometimes I think it could be him too. Like I I go back and forth with him. Just like I go back with like the Brian Coburger. Like I go back and forth with all these cases. But like right. I go back and forth with Dean Runkle because you hear it, but I honestly I don't think it's him. Um I think it's I think it's the other guy. And I honestly want something to be done with it right right and so 
Uh, for those that don't know who the the other guy is, uh, possibly I'm not sure. We haven't really talked about this, but <laughs> in our and, and I know you looked at our last video, and I had sent it to you. But we had um, got some information uh, referencing a story that came out back in 2020, and it talked about in 2019 that a woman had came forward and implicated her ex boyfriend as a possible suspect in this case. Um, this guy is somebody that was picked out of a photo lineup from one of the witnesses that saw uh, the incident go down. This is a guy who was operating a vehicle at the time that had gold fibers, which were found on her body um, that matched the type of vehicle of those gold fibers. They came back to a GM product and he had an Oldsmobile. And so uh, those things match up. And apparently he took a lie detector test and uh, failed that. Um his name is, and I'll, I'll bring it up so that way everybody knows, because our goal here is to try to find out, um, you know, who who committed this crime. And this guy's name is William Bill McClellan. Um, he was also from Vermilion High School, which I'll be honest with you, when I saw that and I saw the Dean Runkle was from Vermilion and that area was teaching in that area, at least uh, that seemed kind of odd. What are the chances that the two main suspects in this case? are possibly involved now you also look at this guy's picture and he kind of resembles what you know the person that you know that they saw and the sketch that was put out there uh this guy apparently also on the day of the that the body was discovered uh police were um doing a log on the uh, vehicles that were passing by and his vehicle his oldsmobile passed by so he apparently was going to sign a a piece of paperwork so that they can search his storage unit and he ended up not showing up as uh, they ended up getting a search warrant for that storage unit and evidence was seized now his name hasn't come out yet because you know um the news station didn't want to put his name out because they for whatever reason and what we want to do is if anybody remembers this guy if you're from the area if you remember him i believe he lives in his vehicle now uh, this is a more of an updated photo of what he may look like now or what he looks like now. If you remember any you know, conversations that you may have had with this man, if he's ever said anything suspicious or things of that nature, um, please let us know if you're a, if you're not willing to go to the police. We're more than happy to take your information. I actually got this guy's phone number and, and we'll be calling him to see if he's willing to comment on, on this case now. Are you familiar with this man? Have you ever seen him? Apparently he lived only a quarter mile away from the Bay Village Square. Are you there, Christy? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever seen this man before? No. No. No, he wasn't a guy that maybe was creeping around the schools or anything mm -hmm. like that. No, I'm not familiar with any of these people. Got you, got you. Yeah, and like I said, we, um, this is apparently where he lived. Uh, this is the address that he, 26920 East Lake Road, which was half a mile away from that area. Um, but that guy, based on one of our other sources, is the guy that the witness, one of the witnesses uh, identified as the possible suspect. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, when it, you know, we can go back to the original. And this is Dean Runkle, for those that aren't aware. This is the teacher who was in the area that was uh, that visited the Lake Erie uh, Nature Center. Um, he kind of kind of looks like both of these guys do resemble the suspect in this abduction case. But Christy, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Me and the guys are going to have a couple of conversation about this case. Um, you're more than welcome to hang out in the green room or, or check us out on the live, but we appreciate you coming on. Do you have any questions thank you, for guys. us? Any uh, questions? Or do y'all have any questions before I let her go? Well, I just wanted to ask her if she still stayed in contact with her friends from uh, elementary. I don't know if you all, if you still talk to them. Yeah. You still go back and try to remember we're trying to figure out. I talked to my, yeah. I mean, one of my friends picked him out of the lineup. Got gotcha. you. Blue, do you have any? Um... Uh, my question was, I was going to ask earlier, is that year that she disappeared, 
how did it affect the area like say during Halloween? Did they cancel Halloween for y'all? Mm-hmm. They did? That's that's what it sounds like. Yeah, we were on lockdown. Pretty crazy. Right. Our little town. The small little town of Bay Village was on lockdown. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it is definitely a small little place and, uh, you know, a horrible tragedy that occurred that's still unsolved. You know, at the end of the day, guys, we're trying to get this case back out there. There's been a possible suspect that's been linked to this that's been buried. It's been buried. And we're going to go into that a little bit more. Uh, thank, thank you, Christy. So thank you so much for joining. We appreciate it. No, thank you. you. Thank you. I, you have no idea. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you of from course. the bottom like, of all of our hearts, like all of ours. Thank you. thank you from Bay Village personally, like everybody, Amy yeah. Stanley, like everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. I know course. you have thank so you. many followers on here and anybody who can help, please like dig. Yes. yes. You're sleuthing. Nice. Let's sleuth people. All. Come on. Let's do it. But thank you, Christy. And um, we'll be talking to you soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Great guest. Thank you. Thank you, Christy, again for coming on. Let's let's get into this case a little bit. So the reasons I was asking the questions, referencing the phone calls, if she answered the phone was because is she known to have been answering the phone? That's going to be the first thing that I wanted to know. And and, you know, perhaps if she wasn't known to be answering the phone, then maybe that phone call thing or, or whatnot may have not been exactly true. But if she was known to cancel the phone, I, I, I sincerely think that Maybe perhaps she did get that call. Now, one thing that I never got as far as a tie in when it came to Dean Runkle, who was the teacher, and I'll bring his picture back up so we all know who we're talking about, uh, was how would he have known? Because Amy's mom had gotten a position change. How would he have known of that, right? Yeah, she went from part time to full time, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. And so to probably her, that's a pay increase. That's uh, That could be considered a promotion. Yeah. How how would Dean Runkle know if, you know, from the nature center? What do you think? Um, that's what I was I was um, you know, having a problem with because what for what it sounds like, uh, she answered the phone, right? And the person on the other line said that they're gonna buy a gift for her mom, right, to keep it a secret, right? For yeah. the promotion. So yeah. obviously the person on the other line um, knows the mom's where she works, right? Knows right. The, knows that he that knows that she has a, a, a brother. Mm -hmm. Because I think he met that he mentioned not to tell his her brother. But it's just, and he would have had to have known when to call. Exactly. Only get her to answer the phone. Yep. So like so in other words, this person either was real close to the family or or possibly even um related, you know. Right, right. But now, then again, it goes back to, you know, like when we asked Christy about her being really like too trusty, you know? Yeah. It goes back down to that. Um, I, I I feel like the person that called, she probably knew, you know what I mean? Knew something of, of him to, to trust enough to go and meet at the Bay Square, right? Right. Is it, is it Bay Square? Yeah, Bay Square Village, Bay Village Square is shopping center. But yeah. Now, so here was the other thing. So she gets out of school, right? And she walks to the Bay Square Village and she's seen from 215 to 320. Yeah. Right. This guy here, Dean, lived in Vermilion at the time. It was a bit of a drive to get out there. It's not in this vicinity. Yeah. You know, her brother got home around 310 or so, three o'clock. He called his mother to inform her that uh, Amy had made it home. Now, Amy had lied that day and said that she was going to an audition and she was going to be doing a choir audition, which wasn't yeah. true. Yeah. And um, 30 minutes later, so at approximately between 3.30 and 3.40, Amy calls and says that she's OK. Yeah. Now, there's no cell phones at the time, so it's either coming from a pay phone or it's coming from the guy's house. Yeah. And. And I you know, doubt he's going to take the risk to, to put her in a, a payphone. Right. 
Exactly. I think he's going to take her home. Maybe perhaps he said something to her like, I forgot my wallet. You know, uh, do you mind coming with me? Um, they found some unprocessed or some fake meat in her digestive system where they said that it could have been Chinese food. Man, yeah. it sounds like chicken nuggets from McDonald's to me. Um, mm -hmm. Is it possible that he's like, hey, I got some I got a Happy Meal for you. Let me go get my wallet, you know, and. You know, I know you normally call your mom when you get home. So let's do that because he she called home. Now, either she told him that or uh, he already knew. Now, when it comes to this young man or this man here, uh, he's no longer young. What happened was he apparently uh, worked at a place called Radcon. Now, Radcon was owned by his uh, his adoptive parents or his father, right? His cow. Cal Blackman was the uh, founder of Radcon. Radcon was near Amy's mom's workplace and a bar that Amy's mom may have gone to. Now, the reason why I was asking uh, Christy whether or not uh, when she spent the night at Amy's house, if, you know, her parents ever left or her mom ever left, uh, that was because, her, you know, I wanted to know if she ever went out to that bar. Now, mm -hmm. according to the news report, uh, Bill, who we are speculating is the person that they are, that they they think is the guy, right? Yeah. He, he stated that he may have met Amy's mom at the bar. Yeah. Now, in that conversation of meeting at the bar, do you think that there's the possibility that she's telling him a little bit about her life? You know, I have two kids. My kids are in this grade. My daughter gets out of school at a certain time, you know, especially if you're consuming alcohol. Sometimes you opened up a little bit more than you want to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That that could have been definitely the case if he actually met the mom at the bar. That that could have been a you know a possible uh, um, conversation that when I had, you know. Right, and I'm thinking that, you know, especially if she's if she gets a promotion, you don't think she's going to go out there and celebrate? Like, hey, I got mm -hmm. a promotion, I got this happening, and. Um, you know that type of situation you see so for me i think that kind of gives you an idea whether or not you know some indication on a few things you know he finds out who she is maybe finds out where she works or lives uh, mm -hmm. finds out that she has kids and she knows that she got a promotion that would be something that would in my opinion kind of sparked that up and the answer to the question yes back in 2006 i believe it was um a couple of people came forward in north olmstead which is a um an area not near bay village it's near vermilion i believe yeah. um came forward and said that they got calls similar to the one that amy received was saying that one of their parents had received a promotion and they wanted to buy him a gift but they didn't take the bait apparently, but that supposedly that happened in and around the same time. Um, now, when it comes to this guy here, he lived close. He drove an Oldsmobile apparently, and he was driving around during that time. Now the girlfriend, ex-girlfriend also says that for no reason, this man yeah. would take her out to the area where the body was found, which was 50 miles away, yeah. right? And so, and he was there the day they discovered her body. Yeah. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, so, that's a lot of red flags, everybody. There is a lot of red flags. And, like, you know, he fails the lie detector test. He gets he get picked out by the lineup. Huh? Does he get rid of the car as well? Um, I'm not sure if Bill does. I know that uh, Dean Runkle did. I think he, oh that's the one that was at the junkyard right that was already yeah yeah Dean okay. Runkle in 1991 and his vehicle ended up in a junkyard yeah. and back back in was it late 80s the late 80s right mm -hmm. there was no way of they didn't have phone records or anything like that did they nah they couldn't tell who was calling they couldn't tell where they were calling from things of that nature I don't even think the police had access to contact the phone company to see where a phone call came from back then. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. And also, like back then, they had the phone books. Remember phone books? Oh, yeah. They yeah, had your street address and your your phone number and everything like that. So yeah, but I mean, that's true. Going back to the calls, like he that, that the person must have known. You no, know, he had, she had a brother, or and the 
know the mom and the dad. Obviously, they knew their schedule. Right. Now, now if the parents, because, you know, that's one thing we don't know. Perhaps maybe the parents, uh, mom or dad, or even the brother may have, you know, could have told police. And, you know, I would have asked them, have you ever received calls where somebody hung up? Yeah. You know, waiting for, you know, somebody in particular to answer the phone. Mm -hmm. And um, in my opinion, they, I would hope that they were asked that question. But if they were asked that question and the answer was no, then how did this guy know when she was going to be alone? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so that's the issue right there, in my opinion. And, you know, there's a lot of things that lead towards Dean Runkle. He also drove a Grand Prix, which is a GM product that had, mm -hmm. uh, you know, tan interior or gold interior which was similar to the uh, fibers that were found on her body and he had some he had some uh what do you call it uh he had reports against him from some of the students that he taught you know some of them being male some of them being female uh being inappropriate in fact he was actually caught on a couple occasions where um he was alone in his vehicle with some students and so uh he, which is weird, because I believe Dean Runkle right now works assisting homelessness or homeless people in Ooh. Florida, and um, Bill is homeless, but not in Florida. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's just one of those things that makes it kind of a little bit weird. But you know, and I and I get the the aspect when it comes to Dean Runkle, when it comes to him. What ends up being the biggest clue there is that he was a volunteer at the nature center where people wrote down phone numbers and addresses. But you bring up an excellent point there that at that time, phone books were very popular. Yeah. Anybody could have gotten their phone number or address unless they were unlisted. Mm -hmm. And in a small place like that. It's not hard. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that you brought up an excellent point, man. And that makes me think that, yeah, that it, it didn't have to necessarily be from there. Also, the the, the market or was it the Bay, was it Bay Village or was it Square? Yeah, Bay Village, Bay Village Square. Bay Village Square no, they didn't have um, at that time. I don't think they had um, any security cameras or anything like that. So it would have been a big help if that was the case, you know? Yeah. Especially, I mean, you still have. Uh, other students or other kids um, given the uh, law enforcement, the description of the, of the supposed suspect that picked up Amy, right? Yeah. That's where the sketch came from. Yeah. Yeah. Like, now, I think, I think since they already had arranged this meeting, right? And she thought that she was going to actually go get a gift for the mom. Like they, right. she didn't, make a fuss around she didn't make a fuss she didn't make no commotions and just left willingly thinking that was the case and that's why nobody at that time saw anything wrong with it you know what i mean right yeah in fact the witnesses that saw her assumed that this was her father or her uncle that was picking mm -hmm. her up there you know there wasn't any nefarious thing that occurred during that time now the injuries that were on amy's body was she had one force trauma to the head and uh wounds to her neck from a uh, edged weapon yeah and so you know it is speculatory or speculative that perhaps maybe the uh, blunt force trauma to the head was her realizing that something is not correct something's not right in the vehicle and um he, he ended up assaulting her at that point and, and so he go ahead. Uh, when when she was found Right. Um, they said that she was probably placed there hours after she was kidnapped. Right. Yeah. Right. I wonder. I wonder if she got that. I wonder what the. I mean, obviously, we know the the wounds to her neck are probably going to be more fatal than the blunt force. Probably. Mm -hmm. Well, there, I guess it depends. But do you think she got hit before she called or after? Because I remember seeing a interview with the mom that said that she didn't sound like herself at the time when she called. That it sounded off that she that she didn't sound like the same Amy that you know she always, she always, like you know, she talks to. Yeah. Right. Um, I don't think I think that she was possibly hit afterwards. Um, you, you're looking at probably a ten minute difference between the time that she is seen leaving with him to the time that she is calling. Yeah. And so 
I think that maybe perhaps uh, he may have threatened her or something of that nature. And um, one, maybe that's why. One question I had. Do you think if it was not these two guys, right, throwing the curveball, mm -hmm. do you think it was a serial killer? Because when they found her, there were things missing off her person. Um, Somebody kept no. years. I don't think so. And the reason being is where her body was discovered. Her body was discovered in a place, in my opinion, where you would assume that it, that her body would be found. It was very close to the roadway and it was very in a very open area. You know, the same distance that this person would have traveled, could have traveled in another direction and found woods and put this body in a place that was off of a trail somewhere very deep in the woods where her body wouldn't be found. It was found and I believe I have pictures of it. So as you can see, it was very close to the highway here and um, yeah. in an open area, in a field that was flat. Now, one of the things when you bring up things that were missing, one of the things that was missing was a, uh, a notebook that she got from her father who worked for Buick. And it said Buick best in class. Now, he was a, a car salesman that worked for GM and Buick and would travel to the nearby, you know, uh, Buick dealerships. This guy came for money. He, his family owned Radcon. I would assume that he had purchased that Oldsmobile brand new. Uh, Oldsmobile, Buick, and Cadillac were often sold together because they were considered the luxury brand of GM. Yeah. And so, um, and even Pontiac was also considered a, a luxury brand of GM. Chevy was the not so luxury brand at the time. Uh, I assume that maybe perhaps this guy may have even met or known her father as well. Could be, could be. Yeah. Um, going going back to what Blue um, had asked about the, the serial killer thing, um, you know, most serial killers try to hide their body uh, mm -hmm. because sometimes they come back and visit it. You know, they, they get their, their enjoyment out of it. Right. Uh, but there is other serial killers that don't they, they just you know pretty much leave them at the side of the road i mean you have the hillside stranglers you know that's the um kenneth bianchi and uh what's his name? uh and angelo bono you know right. they were they were um on the live women out there in los angeles and just pretty much throwing them out the side of the road that's yeah. true and that makes sense and that's true in this case, I have a feeling that this person may have known. Like, let's just say he did know Amy's mom. Mm -hmm. Do you think maybe that's why he would leave her body in a place where she would like, be found? Like sympathy, almost? Kind of, sort of, or just so that, you know, maybe perhaps the goal wasn't to take her alive, so to speak. Maybe perhaps the goal was just to be improper with her, but she things got out of control. He hit her in the head and felt that he had the need to do this and thank you so much who knows uh M uh mf and nikki i appreciate the 499 super thank chat you. says just because i haven't seen any super chats cheers to everyone <laughs> yeah start sending them in guys you know help hope the show we appreciate that um friday we're going to be giving, doing another giveaway um on some beanies i believe and um you don't want to miss it you don't want to miss it and stickers and stickers yes that's true that's true as well so let's see what year was this because i had something similar to happen to, oh wow this happened in 1989 1989 but this guy's been on the loose for a while you know he's never been caught you know so it was 26 years ago um where wait yeah something like that and um oh no it's more than 26 years yeah, ago. Was gonna say, was like, oh, yeah. the mathy mathing math <laughs> yeah the math is not mathing right there <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can't think of it right away. It's like but 30 anyways, years. 30, yeah, yeah. Like, like 33. Yeah. Yeah. 33 years. So it, it is what it is. But uh, my my math was off there. Remember last time I was off by a lot, too? So. But like yeah. 20 years. 32, George says. Yeah, yeah 32 yeah. years ago. Let's just say yeah. 30s because I, I don't remember what my been. You know, and, and there was a lot of other suspects before we landed on these current ones, right? Yeah, there was a few people that they had suspected, but nothing that would ever came out concrete. Because there was, I believe, if I can't remember, let's see. I remember, oh, 
Oh, sorry, I dropped my light. Um, I remember that they were talking about Sean Dusky. I don't know. He, he had a, also a couple of, you know, kind of a couple of things that that kind of pointed in his direction. You know, I mean, he went from he worked he worked at the at the stables, right, where Amy would um, go ride horses and whatnot, right? Because she was she was into horses. Right. Um, he got fired from his last position because he was apparently tickling young girls, which is weird, right? Right. Um, he was also um, he was accused of. Uh, so a word for <laughs> for the R word. <laughs> um, forcibly, s encounter. Yes, and of a of a twelve year old. You know what I mean? Back in eighty oh, three. So the, 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 and then that's nice. I mean, he was in contact sometime with her at one point, obviously, right? Right. I mean, and after that, there was another. Uh, the other one was a doctor, Doctor Gregory Capella, right? The yeah. daughter rode horses with Amy at the same time. You know, what I mean, they. He also had. Uh, he would. The thing about this guy that he will write love letters to young, uh, minor girls, which is weird. Yeah. Um, and I think I believe he was. Um, I don't know if he was coach or he had something to do with uh, the soccer team, the, the girls' soccer team, and he was sleeping in the same room as them, which is weird. So there's like different other suspects that were out there that that pointed in the same direction, but there were, nothing came out of it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's another suspect that came out that apparently moved, like maybe like a month after or two months after. They just, uh, she went, she disappeared. Like he left the country, but yet told his friends and family to keep him updated up on the case, which is not oh, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, the rumors around the, or the rumors about that guy is that he apparently beat his wife and he moved to Costa Rica. So I don't know if that's a, that's a legit or not, but there's, there's other suspects that do point in the same direction. It's just like the proof has to be there. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, for sure. And um, as far as this going out here, I'm not going to say this out loud on this channel because we'll get taken PDF. down. PDF. But but there was blood found in Amy's underwear that led to believe that something like that had occurred. Yeah. Um, this is they found this also about 300 feet. I'm not sure if it's three. I, I see some some things that say a couple things that are contradictory. Yeah, some say that it's 300 feet. Some say 300 yards. But this was a um, a a, uh, a curtain that was found um, near her body um, that they suspect that she was wrapped in at one point. And yeah. you can see stains in there and stuff like that. This curtain here, I mean, it looks like a 70s style curtain. It doesn't look like 89 to me. That looks... Mm. Oh, yeah, that, that looks hand sewn, right? Right. That's the other thing I was going to ask you. Is like, do you guys think this is something that somebody made? Oh man, I guess those are the blackout curtains from back then, because that's that's like a blanket, pretty much. Yeah. In fact, that's what they described it as as a possible blanket. You know, I felt like this was a '70s style. Um, if it's hand sewn, then this is probably from his house. If it was a uh, not a hand sewn type of thing. Uh, then I would lead it to believe that it was uh, maybe a hotel. I don't know, man. That, 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 I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know about late '80s hotels, but like, I know, I know they found um, the dog, right? Dog hair on it from Amy's dog. They found, yeah, they found her dog's hair on it. Yeah, her dog's hair. Right, so, which was weird on its own too. Somebody and said it's fault. Oh, sorry. I wonder if it's an accidental death. Or, no, because it, she was seen in the shopping center with him. That's the thing. Yeah, this is planned. Yeah, it was definitely planned. I mean, at least, at well, least one. You know, the the part to kidnap her was. Yeah. Now, now, um, as far as DNA goes, they found three strands of hair. Now, the problem with the hair that they found. It, it didn't have the, uh, the follicle part to it. It wasn't pulled out. It was just strands of hair. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, uh, from what I understand, is they cannot match it to anybody yet. 
And so uh, because it's not the follicle now, perhaps maybe uh, technology will, uh, you know, get better and they'll be able to utilize that sample that they have to pull DNA out. But that's going to be something that is um, that you have to, you know, it's going to be something that's going to be, you know, we look at Brian Koberger's case and the amount of DNA has, and, you know, there's a question there. So there's going to be a question based on this once that happens, just because of the fact that it's going to probably be new technology. That and uh, the part of the, it'll deteriorate after, after a while, right? Probably right. So long. right. Uh, maybe, maybe. It won't be as strong as it, it would be, right? Right. Now, if you guys are quilters in the area, this is a bow. This looks like a like a bow tie, and it looks maybe it's not. Maybe that's not like handmade, but I believe the the rings that they use to hang it might be. Well, you know what I mean. Because yeah. can, you show, can, can you show that part? Because it's behind that the end. Of the, you know how that thick part of the of the blanket at the edge. It's behind right. it. You would think it'll be on top of it, right? So it could sit nice and flush. Yeah, this almost looks like it was not a not a curtain initially, and turned into one. Do you think? Yeah, I think so. I I, I feel like it is because, especially like I said, like you know how those those things were, which where you put the pole in on the top, it feels like it looks like it's not part of the blanket itself, even though it might be the same color. Yeah, this is in my opinion. I think this is handmade. Look at the size of this triangular area and this one right here yeah, this awesome. does not look the same and this and is wider feet. yeah this does the, if it was a machine that made this mm -hmm. and this is also like in my opinion this looks very 70s to me i know it was an 89 but this looks very 70s even the color uh, this could have been a blanket for somebody turned into a um turned into or a quilt turned mm -hmm. into a uh, a curtain there and this is this is it. Um, they took out a square there. They they must have definitely had. Blood. I put maybe yeah. need some Z's on there. I think they have a professional opinion because they are a knitter. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. That's definitely handmade. Yeah, that's what we're thinking too. And so, in my opinion, I don't think you put a handmade curtain in like a motel. That has to be probably from. This guy's house, his grandma's house. Now he was a he was a foster child. He was a, he was uh, adopted, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I wonder how old his parents were. You know they looked fairly old in the picture that I found from Radcon, uh, which we don't know when it was taken. But if he, they were significantly older, uh, maybe perhaps they did some sewing, you know, in the seventies and things of that nature, and had this type of stuff up there. Yeah. But yeah, no, this definitely does look hand hand handmade, and I don't think you're gonna find handmade curtains in a hotel. Mm -mm. And if, especially the hotel, if he did take her to one, is probably not a higher end hotel or things of that nature. Let, let alone like taking a young girl to a hotel, it's gonna raise a lot of flags, man, for everybody. So I don't think he would take that risk. You know what I mean? Right. This is probably something that he had in his trunk. Yeah, I mean, he may have put it down in his trunk prior to, you yeah. know, as to to plan this ahead of time. Yeah, exactly. Like he probably got it down or got it from his home or whatever, and laid it in the back of his car or the trunk, either one. Right. And used that right. to to cover her up when he left her body at the was it Ash? What was it called the Ash? You know, Ashland? Ashland or something like that, yeah. Ashland yeah. Fields, right? Right. And this is just to kind of give you guys an idea of, of um, how far this person traveled to drop the body off. It was uh, 46 miles away from Bay Square Village, uh, or Bay Village Square, I'm sorry. Dyslexia kicked in there for a second. Like, I mean, you have a lake up here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If he was trying to hide the body, it'd be easier to go somewhere around this highway or or up here and be closer. Uh, you know, traveling that type of distance with 
with a body or even if a child, if she was alive up to the point anywhere along this road, that's a, that's a significant risk. Oh yeah. I, I feel you know? like, I feel where the body was found. I feel like he was trying to, I don't think he was trying to put it next to the, to the road itself, but I think he was trying to put it farther, but got spooked maybe by a passing car and just maybe. left it there and booked it. Maybe, maybe, but I mean, why go this direction? I mean, you have the uh, Cuyahoga Valley National Park here. This is a wooded area. It's closer also. You know, you can be, uh, you can go in there and, you know, depending on the time of day or night that you're doing this on, um, not be seen. You know, to do it there and to drop them off off the side of the road. Um, and then, you know, to stop because you probably remember that he had, you know, you might be right there. You might be right because that curtain was found 300 feet to 300 yards away mm -hmm. i don't think he dropped her off wrapped in it because i think that she would have it would have she would have held that curtain down right with her body mm -hmm. and so uh in my opinion he uh left and then realized he still had that piece of evidence in his vehicle pulled back over and tossed it out sure. yeah and it's so because, because you said that um it was probably hours after she got abducted that right. he passed away, right? He's right, right. Only put there, right, since then. So what the, was that last part? That she was abducted and she was she passed away and then she was put at that in that field, right? Right. So like from when she got abducted to when she got put, let's say it was like three hours. So it'll probably be what like six, six thirty. It'll still be daylight out there. Uh, it's October. It's late October, so maybe, uh, maybe it might be dusk. Yeah, but but I mean, they're still pretty pretty visible, right? I would assume so at about about yeah. that time. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like he probably was trying to put that body farther away, and then got spooked by someone like a passing car or or something. You know what I mean? And exactly like you said, he probably just chucked that out of the out of the window to get rid of evidence. Yeah. And, and the other thing that makes me believe that maybe perhaps this was a, a rookie at this mm -hmm. is where the body's at. Look at how far away it is when you had other options to have gotten rid of it sooner, quicker, uh, with less possible uh, chances of somebody finding. I mean, if he weights down the body and throws it into that lake, you know. Trust me, Lake Erie's huge, man. It ain't a small lake. Right. I mean, you have many a places where you can dump that body at. To go out of the way into an open field on an open road, that leads me to believe that he was, it may have wanted somebody to find that body, whether it's guilt, whether it's whatever. Could be, could be. The only thing that sucks is like, you know, Aben's mom never found out who it was. She passed away, right? Yeah. And never got to know if, you know, she never got justice for her daughter, you know? That's the sad part about it. She passed away back in what, early 2000s? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, and it's that's pretty that's pretty sad, you know, to go so many years without knowing and not ever knowing. Sad. Right. Yeah, no, that is true. That is true. And uh, I saw somebody say that uh, North Olmsted's near Bay Village. Not oh yeah, it is right there near Bay Village. It's south of Bay Village, not near Vermilion. So um, I, also, I stand corrected on that one. Also, I, I saw that. Um, there within like northern um ohio there was a lot of um like a, a really like a lot of registered sa offenders you know right yeah so i mean the the, the police department or the law enforcement had plenty of you know persons they could be involved you know just because of their their past so it's just it's hard to tell, but at the same time, it could have been easier too because such a small population. So it kind of makes me because it makes you wonder that maybe he wasn't from there and was passing through. But then again, it goes back to that same phone call. About how we know he know, you know, some of the personal. Uh, yeah, and then like I said, the the timing in which the perfect. call came in. You know what I mean? From Amy to her mom. Mm -hmm. Now. You know, her not acting like herself also could be because she was 
actively lying to her mom. She yeah. told her she was home, told her that she was at choir practice. So, you know, it may not have been because at the time she was threatened or anything like that or, or was hit at that point. It could have been just because she was actively lying to her parents at that point. Um, you know, just thinking out loud about that. Uh, and, you know, it begs the question, where at? And are you going to risk taking somebody you know, to a uh, restaurant or to a uh, payphone, to somewhere else where somebody can see you and knowing what you're going, your plans are and knowing that it's a small community and people are going to be vigilant and try to remember what they've seen. Um, you know, you would think that he probably didn't go down the route of taking her to public places and that phone call was probably at his house. Let's see, Ohio is very cold, so older people would have heavy curtains like that to hold. Yeah, that's true. That's Makes true. Sense. Let's see. Um, Put a blanket over the, the windows. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you're also looking at this area, which also leads me to, well, I mean, even Vermilion is off of Lake Erie as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that that wind and off the lake is, is pretty cold from what I understand. Yeah. But um, man, it's um, it's just a sad situation. But like we said before, we've had we had Christy come forward to us. We've I've talked with James Renner, author, writer. Uh, that's talked about um, in this case. We've had a uh, in this this gentleman here. We've had a, a I've had a video conference with him uh, to get information on Dean Runkle, and we've had other other sources come forward that have told us that. One of the persons uh, that was the witness um, to the abduction uh, in, I read an article, I believe her name was, or was given as Maddie. It says there it's not her real name. They're not disclosing her real name. Mm -hmm. uh, she had uh, identified um, who, you know, Bill, she identified um, this guy. Um, yep. Bill McClellan as the guy. Oh, happy fiesta! Yeah, we'll be um, we'll be doing some some drinking here pretty soon. <laughs> Let's see. Um, yeah, grew up in and publicly buzzed. If you haven't checked them out, go give them a like and subscribe as well and a follow. He grew up in West Virginia. My grandparents and grandma would use some thick blankets like that for the windows. You see that that that's kind of where I'm thinking because let me see. I'm gonna look up his. It shouldn't be very very hard to find it real quick because uh, I had it before. Yes, uh, yes. Friday I, I'm, I'm taking me off, so I might have a few beers on Friday. Nice, nice. So this is the yeah. She was. This is the uh, mother of Bill McClellan, the uh, or, or the foster mother. And yeah. It says right here, foster son William McClellan of Cleveland. She is was, you know, an older person. She was born in 1922. So even in 1989, she would have been you know, up there in age by then. Um, and so, you know, she passed at the age of 91 in 2013. Um, like I said, uh, older folks in the area possibly have had that um, those type of blankets slash curtains to keep out the cold and things of that yeah. nature. Uh, so, do, do you? Let me ask you that, um, Daniel. Do you think it was local, or do you think it was just passing through? It was just bad luck, kind of thing. I think that this guy met met Amy's mom and saw an opportunity there. He saw that that she was being left at home, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, made a phone call and found out that this person was uh, willing to go out there and meet with him. I think there was some skepticism. You know, she was seen there from 215 to 320 waiting. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, he only lived a quarter, uh, half a mile away. I'm pretty sure he was out there around two o'clock watching, making sure that, you know, there wasn't a, a family member with her, wasn't a parent or a police officer hiding by. And when he felt comfortable, that's when he made his approach. Um, you know, I think that this is a person that may have this may have been his first attempt at doing this. Um, some of the reasons behind that is where the body was dumped at and location and how far away. And uh, it didn't sound like somebody experienced, in my opinion. Yeah. And 
you know, um, I think that it was more of an opportunity aspect after meeting the mom and getting some information, knowing that, you know, she got a different job, possibly a promotion, and that would help build confidence in uh, as far as building confidence with the victim, letting yeah. them know that, hey, I, I know who your mom is. Yeah. And, you know, even maybe possibly saying, hey, I know who your dad is. He sold me this car, mm -hmm. you know, and if she knows that those are the type of vehicles that her dad sells, then, you know, that could be reasons, especially for somebody 10. Is, you know, yeah, it's like, oh, OK, well, all this makes sense. You know, my dad, he sold you the car, you know, my mom and you work with her. So, yeah. um, you know, and that may have been something that he's like, yeah, I work with your mom. She she introduced me to your dad and he sold me a car. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I also I also believe that he had to be some somehow like uh person and he knew them, you know what I mean? Yeah. To, to know exactly when to go or what to say in order for you know to gain trust. Yeah. Um, I also think that it might have been the start of something that he was planning to do for a long time, you know. Um, because of the fact of the the missing items that she was missing, you know what I mean? Yeah, it kind of feels like that. Um, you know, the, the theory I would look into is the theory of the two guys that either worked at the stable or that had the children that rode with her. Because uh -huh. what if he kept those items and gave them to his kids, and maybe they remember them being around? Uh, I'm pretty sure they were investigated looked at and and they probably would have asked those kids did you ever receive riding boots like this or or the uh, the earrings and the earrings is something that um you know would have had to have been taken off you know it's and yeah. so but yeah those items are are curious but you're you're right there there is that instance because there was the horse earrings that were taken and there was the riding boots which would make you think or made you believe that maybe perhaps the person had some kind of uh, relationship with horses or things of that nature or yeah. in fact or, or fascinated by horses and so um yeah oh i need a dts shirt check it out so just go check out the store it's on our um on our page there um if you just hit store merch or if you go to any of our videos it's in the bottom there's a, we have another one that has our logo on the back yeah, let me uh, get it real quick yeah big blue's gonna get it so we can show you guys I'm gonna pull him out real quick. Let me. Yeah. Um, you don't want to show his body off to everybody. <laughs> uh, I think Blue likes to show his body off sometimes. Yeah, but the the good thing of the only good thing we can see out of this is that it's still in you know it's still open investigation. It's not cold whatsoever. There's still bits and pieces coming coming out and and keeping this just alive, right? Exactly, exactly. And so if you're interested in the shirt, there's a few of them. Um, you have you can at the bottom of it, of our videos, not our lives for whatever reason they don't come out, but they're right here. Um, it'll send you to Bonfire, and there's a few different ones. We have women's shirts, we have men's. Um, we also have this shirt available, and this is the back of it. So go check them out. Big Blue, I believe you have one yeah. already. Let's, let's yeah. show it. So. The green parts on his green screen are see through, so it's not, it doesn't come holy, it doesn't come holy, <laughs> it comes in one piece. It comes in one piece. Um, we also, I mean, I know it's getting hot, but if you guys are interested in hoodies, there's them, there's some there. And for your Steeler fans, check it out, <laughs> that's the one that I'm ordering. Uh, but you have also women's tees in this, all sizes available. Um, yeah, they even have big boy sizes like mine. You got the big blue edition on the DTS. You have my edition on the black because I'm always wearing black. And you have behind this edition in red. So go check them out if you're interested. It's on Bonfire. It's also in our store on YouTube. We would appreciate it. Um, thank you. Thank you. I know the yellow is dope, right? And so, uh, well, before we, we, we uh, put it to a close, oh, I want to remind you guys, there is some idiot out there that is pretending to be us. They have a show called or a channel called Drunk Turkey Shown or something like that. They were on uh, Pascal show, which I was in the live chat and was able to let him know. I think he was also in JLR. That's not us. Be advised. There are, you know, I guess imitation is the biggest form of flattery, I guess. 
You know, we have some haters out there uh, that get upset because they have some derogatory comments. And when we delete them, they feel that their two cents is worth gold and they get mad and they say something to the effect. Like, I think somebody told me we're going to expose you for deleting our comments and nobody cares about you or your comment. <laughs> <laughs> if they did, you'd have the you would have the subs. You don't. Sorry, bro. And so, uh, you know, like I said, some people think their two cents is worth gold and get upset when their uh, their comments get deleted. Well, be a, you know, be a little bit more respectful and your comment won't be, you know, deleted. We don't we understand that everybody has an opinion, but you don't need to come in with some crap like that. Yeah, exactly. But, we don't ask for much, man. Just, you know, civility, you know. Exactly, exactly. You know, we're probably one of the, uh, you know, a few channels. We don't attack anybody. We don't go after anybody else's channel. You know, we understand that there's a lot of people that have their own opinions and, you know, it's, it's good for them. You know, we we appreciate that. Some, we watch a few different channels. Publicly Buzz is one of them. Uh, Truth and Transparency, uh, The Opinionated Idiot Show, uh, A Criming Shame. Um, I watch Grizzly True Crime every now and then. Um, yeah. I watch, um, I'll, I mean, I watch a lot, a, a variety. I'll even tune into JB Gunner here and there. And so, um, I know he's not for everybody. His language can get a little bit crazy <laughs> and stuff like that, but you know, uh, every now and then I'll check him out. Um, you know, a lot of people will tell me, oh, you don't talk to this person or that person because they said this or that in the past, yeah. but they have something to offer and there's something that we can you know, utilize to help victims in these cases, then we're going to, we're going to, we're going to try our best and do our due diligence to get that help. You know, there's one thing when I was a police officer that I'd like to say is like, you know, sometimes we talk to some of the most people, you know, some people that, you know, weren't the nicest of people to get some information, you know, it, it is what it is. And, you know, if, if there's something to offer there, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna do our due diligence to try to put out the best information that we possibly can and the most accurate information. Yeah, and that's all we can handle. You know, yeah, some people don't like it. Sometimes stuff they talk about is that we don't do true crime all the time. But we we're an original true crime show. We do other shows for fun. You know. Um, yeah. Especially like I, I my favorite is uh, the beer tasting shows. You know, like always. Oh, dude, we got to <laughs> do another one of those, man. We no, definitely got to do one of those. But, you know, if, if you guys are curious what we're about, it's in our description. It says, hey, everyone, we're the Drunk Turkey Show. We're a new show podcast that if I had to describe what we're about, imagine seeing Joe Rogan meeting Pat McAfee show in a bar in space, but broken comparison. <laughs> Come jump on the starship, Daniel Blue Hyman, a.k.a. SSDBJ, and get ready to laugh on this Drunk Turkey Voyage. What's I don't it called? think I said anything about true crime in there. Now, what's it called? Man. When we, we first started this, we we not everybody's going to be on our side. Um, we already we already knew that from the beginning that you know that not everybody's going to like us, and that's okay, you know. And but we do appreciate the people that do stay and watch. And that, exactly, our members and our mods. Thank you very much for everything. Yes. You can see it because of day. Oh, action show. oh, you you got another one? I got a new tool, <laughs> but I'm not doing either tonight. But but I mean, they're your fans, man, because I ordered blue, and they sent me a red. Oh, oh yeah, bro, that's 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 all me. <laughs> before you know, just you know, FYI, before Big Blue came into our group, they used to call me Big Red. So it <laughs> just <laughs> it was just like oh, there's blues in now. So let's just call him Big Blue. He took so over the name. <laughs> true story, true story. But yeah, we, uh, like I said, our intention, you know, wasn't not to cover true crime. We, you know, when you look at our background, you know, you look at him, he loves, uh, he's fascinated by the serial killer aspect and is our, you know, our go to when it comes to those things. You know, he, he's listens to, he's been listening to serial killer type podcasts for a long time. Big Blues in the medical field. I have experience in law enforcement. And so we kind of naturally gravitated towards that side of things. And that tends to be our our biggest pump. But at the end of the day, we're going to want to do things that we enjoy, which is consuming alcohol and and um, and enjoying each other's comments. You know, I mean, yeah, exactly. Shooting the breeze. Yeah. 
I remember when we had Kim on and Kim talked to us and then we had that conversation with her after the show. And the very next day we we're talking about Russia, you know, shooting down a, a UFO and we had so much hate. <laughs> like <laughs> y'all are sitting on valuable information. And I was like, yo, I need to validate this lady first. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like she said some stuff that I need to make sure that she is who she is. Yeah. And then, yeah, Pam, Pam, I forgot. That's her real name. Um, <laughs> you know, I um, I need to validate who she is. Anybody can come in here and say I'm so-and-so when I have kids here and there. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to just turn around and put it out there. It took me a few days to make sure that she was who she was. Yeah. And uh, once I figured that aspect out, then we put out the video. You know, we do things in a certain manner for a certain reason. You know, we're not all just about trying to get clicks and just trying to put our, you know, get subscribers and things of that nature. We don't aim for that. You know, if we're good, it'll go up. And that's what I tell, you know, I have a few friends that are, that do uh, YouTube and stuff like that. Most, you know, some of them on the true crime side, many of them on the uh, football aspect. When I talk to my football guys, I tell them, I say, hey, your audience is going to tell you whether you're good or not. If they like you, they're going to subscribe or they're going to like, and they're going to come back and watch. If, if they don't, then we, we have to tweak some things. Us in particular, we've been stuck at 35,000.7 subs for a while. So yeah. apparently we need to do something a little bit different to get that thing going in the right direction. The, the calendar, man. Big Blue's calendar. I'm telling you. Uh, <laughs> we, we, yeah. we, had, we hit 50K, y'all. We hit 50K. <laughs> we will put out a calendar. I'm down. And I'm down. I'm down too, man. Screw it. We'll put out the calendar. We'll be out there in our John Green tractors and our overalls, and you'll. I, I, I'm the one that gets to take the picture in the bass boat. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll listening to all about that bass, aka bass. Uh -huh. um, but guys, I want to say thank you, guys. To, thank you to everybody in the live chat. Thank you to everybody, our mods. Thank you, everybody, all your member, all the members that have joined. I hope you guys enjoy the new emojis. I've seen them throughout the entire time. I love it. Um, guys, you have any final words before we let everybody go? Um, I just want to say, like I said earlier, thanks to the members, the people watching, and the mods. Uh, I'm, they made hamburger helper, and I'm hungry because I can smell them. Man. So I, I got to go. I got to go. <laughs> I just want to say and put it out there, it is Fiesta time. Y'all be careful out there, man. They're doing... Uh, you know, no, uh, what is it? Well, you can't say no to breathalyzer or, or the blood test. So. Yeah, it's, man. Uh, it's pretty rough out there. You get too drunk, Uber, or at least sit there and sober up for a while. I mean, they don't arrest you for sitting in the curb until you get sober. So you just don't That's sit in your car in the driver's seat. Get in the back seat, lower the windows, and, and we'll fall asleep or something for a while. <laughs> uh, for yeah, sure. man. Don't drive. Don't don't risk taking somebody else's family member out. Man. Yeah, exactly. It's not worth it, especially in a day where you have the ability to get rides to places. You know, be yeah, safe yeah. out there. And I think even the, the like during this time, the police have a special number you call. And they give you free rides home. What? Yeah, it's crazy. To avoid drunk driving. And First of all, if you're drinking on a Wednesday, you might have a problem there. Hey, 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 I used to drink on a Wednesday. Yeah, <laughs> but like, not to like Thursday. get drunk. <laughs> uh, I saw a video last night. There was a, somebody cumbia dancing for like a good 20 minutes to no music. The band had already stopped. Oh, was... man, you know they're having a good time there. <laughs> you know, me, myself, if, if you know, before, before I was uh, married and before uh, when I was uh, free. Sorry, babe. <laughs> if you wanted to find me, it was usually on a Tuesday night at karaoke at a place called Cooter Browns. I was always there. I was there too. Uh, yeah, it was it was a good time. I was out there singing a few songs. Uh, I play a little bit of guitar, play a little bit of music, sing a little bit. Maybe maybe I, maybe one day I'll put out a video and so you guys can hear me. Uh, won't be anytime soon. Huh? I'll be back up vocals. Backup vocals, blue can be on the uh, on the cajon on the box. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, I, I play the accordion. Yeah, <laughs> let me play the accordion. <laughs> and, and of course, the wife comes in. Really, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cooter Browns. It, it, it's now called Stenson's Bar. I think is what it's called now. Yeah, and it's fun. I went through the night and had 
they had the whole pictures for 10 bucks as it just said i drank two pictures and i had a good time dude you gotta tell me man is there karaoke there still on tuesdays i went on a friday or saturday and it was like bad so ah, I man. see I, I'm not a, I'm not big on crowds. I don't like people crowding me. And so I really loved it on Tuesdays because it wasn't too busy and I can get up there and do my thing every now and then, you know, a couple of songs and I wasn't crowded. I could go to the bar and get myself a drink and not have to wait 20 minutes for it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But with that, with that being said, who knows, maybe one day um, we're the drunk turkey show, y'all. <laughs> you know, we, we tell you what to do, but we don't want y'all listening to drunk. So. Peace out. I think we're going to go live maybe in the morning. Uh, just a little bit FYI. My wife is pregnant, and if she goes into labor, then we're not going to live. Yeah, so, not, me, not me for sure. Well, i got to work. So. For sure, for sure. We, me and Blue might go live. We might do a Brian Coburger just questionnaire type of thing mm -hmm. and uh, just kind of wing it. There's been a lot of information that's come out. So with that being said, for the Drunk Turkey Show, Peace see out, you tomorrow. Man. Peace.